guys, welcome to PDHP with Miss Power. Today we are joined by Sarah Blizzard, who is currently training with the Australian bobsled team. Welcome, Sarah. Thank where, you very much. Thanks for having me. You're so welcome. Um, where in the world are you right now? I'm currently in Austria, in Innsbruck. Um, it's very nice here. It's like it's a very sunny, beautiful place. And there's normally snow. There's no snow at the moment, but it's it's a beautiful place. That's unreal. And so bobsled team, how <laughs> did you get involved with this sport? Yeah, uh, it's it's pretty random. Um, so I did come from a track and field background. So I was a sprinter. Um, and I simply just got asked one day if I would ever give it a go. So the current pilot, Bree Walker, so she's my teammate. Um, she didn't have a team. So she was looking around and she contacted someone who contacted my coach. Uh, and then my coach asked me, and he's like, would you do this? And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Why not? Um, and then two months later, I was on the plane overseas to jump in the sled for the first time. So it all happened very, very quickly. Um, but yeah, it, it is like a lot of people who do sprinting um, do get, I guess, scouted for doing bobsleigh. Yeah. Wow. And so what exactly is your event? Because there's a few different types of bob sledding yep yeah so there there's three different types so mine is the two person sled so I have my pilot in the front she's the one that's steering and I'm in the back so I'm called the brakeman or the brake woman um so we basically we push very hard um, we jump in hold on we put our heads down so we don't get to see anything um at the end of the run we then pull the brakes um they actually also have a four person sled but that's just for the men um, and there's also mono bob, which, which is just a one person sled, but just for the pilot. So I don't do that one at the moment, but yeah, just the two person sled. Wow. Okay. That's really cool. And your journey so far. So you said you were pretty much given that two months and then you were on the plane and heading overseas. So um, what year was that? And what's your journey been like so far? Yep. So that was late in 2019. So I spent the 2019, 2020 season pretty much from like October through to February, March overseas. And that was a bit of a, a learning year. So just learning about the sport, learning what my job is, um, learning how to actually do it, trying to improve. Uh, we had a few races in, races in there and I did my first World Cup race, which was actually here in Innsbruck as well. Um, and then from there, after that season, I've gone home, trained, spent six months in Australia, and then I've come back overseas again. Um, last season was a massive season. Um, so I did all of the World Cup races, which was, it was about five in the end. Um, so it was quite a lot. It was a very big season. But again, I improved quite a lot. Um, racing every weekend was like the best kind of training. Um, and then after that, went home, did home quarantine or hotel quarantine, which is not much fun during COVID. Um, and then I was home for three months and then I actually came back overseas mid-year. So I haven't been home quite that much, but um, I came over just to train with my, I have a push coach. So that's just someone that's helping me get better at my pushing. Um, and they, yeah, he helped me an enormous amount and I've improved quite a lot working with him. Um, it's a very, very technical technical sport in that sense so it's been very good working with him and then and then yeah now we're here we're on the world cup circuit again so I've just completed my first world cup race for the season and yeah hopefully this year we qualify for the olympics so all the points that we get from these races this year uh, or this season sorry actually help us to qualify for the olympics so um it's been a very quick journey like it's gone very quick I spend most of my time overseas and not much time back home in Australia but um but yeah, it's it's a, I guess a very quick journey to be able to compete on the um, on the World Cup level, which is kind of good. Absolutely, and super exciting as well. Yeah. Um, and so with COVID, how did that affect you girls? Because you would have been overseas when it sort of hit. Yeah, so I was very lucky. My first season, I came back um, like it was a few days before they bought in home quarantine for returning overseas travelers. So I only just missed out on that. Um, but it was just starting to become a big thing overseas. So very lucky with the timing that I came home. Um, but I have come home to try and work and train during COVID, which uh, everyone knows was a huge challenge. I was very lucky. I still had a job that I could work at. Um, but working, I mean, sorry, working and then also training and trying to be creative with my training and we don't have access to anything. So that was definitely hard. Um the next season, I, I was able to get an exemption and go overseas. Um, so I um, 
yeah, so I uh, went overseas in October again. And then it, the, the big thing for us, like not a lot changed, but the big thing for us was we're having COVID tests twice a week. Um, so I've had a ridiculous number of COVID tests leading up to this point. Um, but you tell people you're having like two COVID tests a week and they're absolutely shocked. But um, yeah, we had to have a COVID test to be able to be in the bubble on, I guess, on the circuit, on the racing circuit. And then you'd have twice a week. So even today, we're actually going off for a COVID test at lunchtime. So you get used to it. Um, but that was a big challenge. We did actually miss two World Cup races last season because our physio tested positive to COVID, but none of us got it, which was very lucky. Very lucky. Um, so it definitely has its challenges. Like we can't go out and socialise with people. Um, we, we definitely see them at the track, um, at the bobsleigh track when we're all training together. But like that's that's pretty much it. Um, in saying that, though, it's kind of good. Like it, we wouldn't normally socialise a whole lot anyway because we're we're training and we're resting and everything. But um. Yeah, the, the main, the really the main difference is the COVID test and nothing else has changed too much. Um, I did, like I mentioned before, do hotel quarantine last year when I came back. That was not fun at all, but <laughs> obviously it's just a process that we have to go through. But um, I have been, I have been quite lucky this year again to be able to access training facilities at Queensland Academy of Sports. So that was very good too. Yeah, that's unreal. And talk us through what your weekly training schedule looks like, particularly at the moment as you're coming into that season? Yeah, of course. So a normal training week um, on the Monday would be, it's a track session. We do a lot of track sessions. So um, kind of like a sprinter who just runs shorter and does more gym work. <laughs> um, but we, on the Monday would be a session just to get our legs going, um, get a bit of speed going through the legs. And then the Tuesday would be like a heavy sled pull or heavy sled push session. And when I say heavy, like sometimes we're pulling sleds that are like heavier than our body weight. So quite often they're 70 kilos, but then when we come on season, that kind of drops a little bit. So I think uh, this week, for example, I think it's like 60 kilos, 40 kilos, 20 kilos or something along those lines. So it's a sled pull session. It's quite like, it's a, it's a decent session. Uh, Wednesday's always a gym session. So, and that will be things like power cleans, um, lots of jumps, um, <clears throat> lots of things trying to work our hamstrings. So everything like the hamstrings and glutes, that's very important for it. So a lot of exercises working on that and some plyometrics as well. Um, so jumping just to get that speed again. Thursday is a bit of a, like an easier session again. So it's like a recovery from the last few days, but also get ready for the next few days. Thursday, again, probably sleds. Um, we do, we do a lot of sled pulls um, and we can do them while we're on season two. We have a, like a sled that we can pull. It's, we take around with us. Um, and then Fridays will be gym again. So it's, it's pretty similar. We don't do a lot of reps of things. So it might often be like four sets of two reps, okay. for example. Um, the only time this really changes is when I am racing. So last week, for example, um, Monday was just that shakeout session. Tuesday, I did three pushes um, at the track with the bobsled. So um, we, we do three runs um, and the three pushes we do for those runs are quite hard. So that's the training, which is kind of nice. You don't have to go home and then go and do another session. Yeah. Um, and the rest of the week is pretty much just like you do a gym session, do a track session, but the rest of the week is pretty much preparing for the race on the Sunday. Mm. yeah okay and what would you say is the most challenging part of your training um the most challenging part is training when you have been at the track all day so for example if I'm not the one that's sliding um you're at the track for a few hours in the morning in the cold you're standing around you're moving heavy sleds like these sleds are 170 kilos so you're moving these heavy sleds you come home and then you have to go and train so that can definitely be the hardest part um I mean, when, when we're not sliding and we're not competing, um, these heavy sled pulls are the hardest part. You've mentally got to get through, like pulling more than your body weight or pushing more than your body weight. That's, that's the hard part, but it's also quite fun. Um, but, yeah, definitely on season, it's the, it's the long hours at the track and then going to go and train. Yeah, for sure. And when you started or I guess still even now, um, what was the hardest part coming into the sport? The hardest part is not being able to do it in Australia. So I had to leave. Um, I had to leave Australia to go and do it for five months without having done it before or knowing whether I was any good at it. Um, and that also has a lot of other things that come along with it. So not having a coach in Australia. So I have a German coach. 
um, <clears throat> that helps me with my pushing. So I send him videos when I'm in Australia, which is, it's great. Technology is great. Um, but it definitely like when they're there in person, it's so much better. Um, but yeah, like I, I literally just had to go like my first run. I was like, Oh, I better like this. Cause I can't go home now. <laughs> I spent a lot of money to come here. Um, and, and that's the other thing too, is we don't get any funding for this. Like as a brakeman, I'm pretty much paying my way to be here. Um, there are a lot of teams that have their season fully covered. Um, but don't get a wage on top of that. And they, they find it hard, but then we're kind of here, like, but we're paying to be here. So that also comes with it not being an Australian sport. Um, so that, that's definitely a big challenge because then we have to go and, go and work while we're home. But um, there's, no, there's no Olympic or government funding at the moment for you guys. No, no. So there is a little bit that goes towards um, the pilots if they've had good results. So for example, Brie with her monobob with the one person sled, she just has some very good results. So she does get some funding for that. Um, and that pays for a lot of like team costs. So we have to buy the sled, which is extremely expensive. Um, it's like a house deposit um, or a very nice car, but um so she's got to buy the sled. Like we've got a transporter that we put both sleds in um, and we drive everywhere in. Um, <clears throat> the runners that go on the sled, the parts that go on the ice, um, they're also quite expensive. Um, equipment, all of that kind of stuff. So there is a lot of things that she does have to pay for as well. Um, but in terms of brakemen, there's, yeah, there's not a lot of funding around. And sometimes we might get like a little chunk here and there, but we haven't, yeah, we haven't really had any funding provided to us. So it's, I guess we try and find sponsors um, that will help us but then again with it not being an Australian sport they're like well we're never going to see it on Australian TV so yeah. that uh, definitely has its challenges but we do have some German sponsors that help provide things for the team on such and as like paying for fuel and all of that. Yeah, who's currently looking after your team? Um, generally the pilot does um, which sounds crazy because they're also like the athlete and they're driving us down as well but normally they're the ones who organize the team we do have a coach though so we have a coach that's shared between three teams so it's us um, the British men's team and the British female team as well so we've got a nice little cooperation and we all work very well together yeah um, so he is kind of like our team manager as well okay cool and yeah, so you raced on the weekend but what does <laughs> your race day look like do you have any routines or obsessions that you need to do um, <laughs> on that day yeah race day is it's very interesting like I think the big thing for Bob says people don't realize how much is actually involved apart from going down the run so in the morning we actually have to go to the garage and put the runners on the sled and we have to make sure like the day before we're like sanding them to make sure they're nice and smooth and everything. And there's no, um, no scratches in them. And when I say scratches, like the tiniest little scratches we have to get rid of. So wow. that like the race preparation actually starts like a few days out when we're preparing runners and everything. But um, on actual race day, we go do the runners. Um, we put the sled in the truck, take the truck, um, drive the truck to the track um we go and like we flip it upside down where all the sleds are out it's all it's always quite nice especially here with the nice views in the background um but yeah that that all takes like I don't know like an hour already before the start of race day um it's already you've had to lift the sled a few times and everything so but then from there um it's pretty much just warm up as usual um chuck on the headphones listen to some fun music um nothing too full on <laughs> but some, something fun just to get to get me pumped up um and then and then it's pretty much yeah go chuck on the race suit um we get to wear some pretty cool race suits which is a bit of fun um unlike <laughs> athletics but um that, that's the fun part and cool so what's your go-to brekkie for comp day uh wheat bix um, <laughs> i do love wheat bix uh i normally do seven depends though because race day you kind of wake up with some nerves sometimes and you put seven in and you don't get through it but normally seven is my number I don't know why wow. that is I'm not I, I never like odd numbers <laughs> um but yeah I actually have a packet of wheat bix that I've taken around here with me you cannot buy them over here um so my partner actually sent me some um <laughs> to get me through the season um but otherwise normally we're staying in hotels that have food so sometimes a bit of cereal and some eggs if I can't have my wheat bix yeah that's great and <laughs> so you're all together close quarters um life on the road training pretty much every day together how do you guys balance your lives out like 
do you ever get on each other's nerves? What do you <laughs> We're do? actually we actually work very well, unlike some other teams. I know that they like there's different personalities that can clash, but we're all quite similar. We're very good at realizing when we need our own space. So we kind of just go and find our own space. Um, sometimes we have our own rooms. A lot of the time we do share because it's very expensive to have your own room. So um, it's very easy to just go and like, um, I don't know, even sit on the hallway, sit in the hallway and call parents or something like that. And it's very, it is very easy to do. And we're all, I don't know, we just work very well together. We're quite lucky. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been very smooth sailing in terms of like team dynamics. Cause I do know there are other teams that just don't get along all the time. <laughs> um, unfortunately, really like, yeah, you spend so long on the road together, but, um, like even today, for example, one teammate's going off to go and train. Um, another one has a few jobs they've got to do. And like I'm talking to you at the moment. So like we're all kind of separated on a rest day. Um, but yeah, I mean, when it comes down to it, we're all, yeah, we work very hard together and we all want the same thing. So it's it's very easy. Yeah, that's true. And what's been the best part of starting this sport? Um, it's a, a new challenge for sure. Like, I, it didn't come easy to me. Like I've improved so much over the last few years because of the help that I've had. Um, and it's, it's definitely been a challenge. And the good thing is like with training, it's the way it's different to training for sprinting is that you're, I guess most sessions you're giving it everything. Like obviously you do do that in track and field as well, but it's just a different way of like, you have to push these heavy sleds. So you have to give it everything for every rep. Um, it's, it's very challenging and like, you're always trying to max things out, like do max box jumps or max cleans and like go heavy on everything. So that's definitely a fun part of it. But, um, but yeah, it's it, the challenge, the challenge of like trying to get, learn a new sport and kind of being at the back of the field and trying to work out push times up to be up there with everyone else. That's, I mean, I do, I do love that part. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And do you have a favorite race track or place that you have stayed Ooh. before? Um, I, St. Moritz in Switzerland. I stayed there for the first time last season. Um, that is the nicest track to slide on. It's very different to all the other tracks because it's actually a natural track. So they remake it every year. Um, and it's so smooth to slide on. Like it's, it's the nicest track in terms of being a break win because in the, like in the back, you can get thrown around a little bit. You get bruises all over the place. Like I have some pretty nice bruises at the moment. Um, and some runs can be very rough, but St. Moritz is very nice because it's a natural track and it's a beautiful place. Um, apart from that, um, here in Innsbruck is my favorite. It's a very nice track. There's very nice views. The place here, like the town and everything is just beautiful. It's a lot of fun being here. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. So to finish up, we're going to do a quick Q and A called fast four. Um, so basically four quick questions, um, all about you. So your <laughs> favorite food. Pasta favorite book oh I don't actually read a whole lot <laughs> what's your favorite movie what's your, what's your go-to oh, okay. Netflix and chill yeah my favorite movie is actually Mamma Mia <laughs> love it um an unusual habit or thing that you love oh that's I mean that's a very good question because I'm not really sure an unusual habit I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> I feel like I've just been living in bobsleigh world for so long that I'm doing the same things every day. Um, I honestly don't know how to answer that question. That's um, right. Yeah. <laughs> what about um, in the last five years, what is the one thing that has most improved your life? So it could be yeah. anything that's, that's made your life better, easier, um oh, earlier this year I decided to move to Queensland to train which was amazing because I've previously been living in Canberra and I I don't get a summer because I'm away for summer in Australia so moving to Queensland to the sun in, like it dramatically improved my life and my mood <laughs> the warmer weather yeah for sure works. we don't get Definitely any warm weather on season <laughs> that's so good and when will we have you back in Australia um, I'm not sure. <laughs> Hopefully it might be at the end of February or at the end of March around then. So early next year. When are the Olympics? Uh, in February. Very exciting. So well, worst we case you... scenario, I'll be in Feb, but hopefully not. <laughs> Fingers crossed. And we wish you the very best on your Olympic endeavours, you and the girls. Um, and thank you for joining us for this chat. Perfect. Thank you so much for having me. Cheers. Thank you.